Okay, I want to talk a little bit about the control wiring. Um, this is the electrical box that I found to put most of my controls in. I'm not worried about them getting, you know, it doesn't have to be watertight, but I also don't want them to be sprayed and soaked with water, although I am going to put a belly pan on. Um, but this will protect them quite a bit from moisture. As you can see, what we have is the circuit breaker. This, if there's too many amps going through the system, should trip and stop the system from working. But it's also going to work as a manual disconnect. So I'm going to connect a rod to this lever so that it can be turned off and on. Because obviously you won't be able to get to it quickly once the lid is on. Um, so that's going to be our manual disconnect. If I'm working on the system or if something happens and I need suddenly to turn it off, I'm going to use that. This is a main contactor. This is when you turn the ignition key to on this little thing in here contacts and allows juice to throw through the system so that when you step on the pedal then you go. There are a couple things that are helping this main contactor um, just be as safe as possible. One of the things is this little device right here is called a charger interlock relay and what that is is where my charger plugs in in the trunk I have an extension cord that comes out and plugs into here so that when I plug the car in this relay also gets a 120 volt signal and what it does is it interrupts this signal going to the contactor well, what that means is that when I'm plugged in there's no way I can energize this contactor and drive off it's really all it is is a safety so that you don't drive off with the plug attached um, not that that would be a horrendous, horrible thing, but, you know, you don't want to do that. So it, all, all that does really is it just keeps you from being able to drive away while you're plugged in somewhere charging. Now, the ZX-2 has a inertia kill switch for the fuel pump, which obviously I don't have a fuel pump, so I had a leftover inertia switch. And all this does is when it gets a, a big enough jolt, it kind of pops its little system in there, and it disrupts the signal to these two wires. So all of this is wired together so that if I'm in an accident, um, and like I said, it gets a big enough jolt and I'm in an accident, whether I'm conscious enough or not to turn the key off, to turn the system off, this will trip and it will interrupt the signal going to this contactor and it would be just the same as if I turned the ignition off. It'll disconnect the contactor and it'll stop the system from having juice in it. So really you've just got kind of uh, two extra safety devices here. This uh, relay was only about $16 and it came with the uh, bulk of stuff that I bought from KTA and the inertia switch was free. It came with the car and just isn't being used anymore for the fuel pump. You have a couple other safety things. When you're talking about the high voltage system, you can see a lot of the battery cables hooked together. This right here is a 400 amp slow burn ceramic fuse. And, and this works very similar to the circuit breaker. It basically, if it gets detects too much current going through it uh, for too long a period of time, this fuse will pop and also interrupt the, the closed circuit and keep you from uh, having juice. I just put it inside a little plastic tubing so that if that ever does happen and it does pop, I don't get this all over the car. It stays right there contained in that system. Plus it just sort of gives it a little protection against the weather as well. You can see that I put um, lug covers on all the lugs uh, just for an extra little protection again. Um, you know, while we're here, I guess I'll go ahead and show you a couple other things. This is uh, my heater relay. So basically, I have my ceramic heater in the car, and that is hooked to a just a toggle switch in the dash, which can only be turned on if the fan is on. So there's no way that the heater can be sitting in there burning its way through the dash because the fan's not blowing air through it. So this here is the... 12 volt power that um, comes from the heater switch and then this is just the ground for that so that when the heater switch is turned on it allows this relay to allow this current to go through this is the 120 volt current from the battery pack this one here goes back into the heater relay this one comes over here and is attached um, with a high amp fuse to the main battery terminal and then the negative from the heater pack if you can see it right here the negative from the heater pack goes up and connects um, 
to the most negative on the battery pack. So far, everything I've tried has worked. The, uh, the contactor is working fine. Um, the power steering, let's talk about that for a second. Remember we talked about power steering and I was going to come back to it later. I do want to keep power steering, especially since I'm adding quite a bit of weight to the front of the car. So this little sucker right here comes out of a 2000 Toyota MR2 and it is an electric pump that provides hydraulic power as opposed to a pulley driven pump off of the regular motor. So this is all hooked up. Um, it works great and I also put a on and off switch on the dash for that so that if I want, you know, if I'm driving down the road, if, if I don't need power steering, basically, I can turn it off. Now, I do have it hooked to my transmission's vehicle speed sensor. So, theoretically, when I get up to a certain speed, the vehicle speed sensor should send a signal to the power steering pump and turn it off also. Because, obviously, you don't need power steering over, say, 10 miles per hour. But uh, if that doesn't work, then I do have the backup switch on the dash. I just won't know if it works until I actually start driving the car, which I haven't done yet. Now, sort of these uh, loose cables you see kind of lying around right here, these things go to, um, they go to the uh, controller. So the controller is mounted basically onto the lid of this. So once this is screwed down, the controller will sit right on top of it and then everything will be hooked together. I'm really close actually to being able to take my first test drive, um, getting ready to hook up the DC-DC converter and what that does is it uh, basically takes the 120 volt package here, converts it to 12 volt power, will recharge the car's accessory battery and provide power for the power steering pump, the power windows, the windshield wipers, all that sort of stuff. But like I said, I just wanted to give you a good look at the uh, control box as it is now because my next step really is going to be covering it up and you won't be able to see any of it later. Okay, a quick update. I made this out of a piece of cutting board, which I used the other part of it to uh, as a mounting plate for my DC-DC converter. <clears throat> Basically what I did is I uh, cut out a section that will fit right over this um, little switch here, and then screwed it down to a uh, piece of aluminum and I notched out the side of my electrical box a little bit so that basically that sits right there and it goes back and forth. It actually takes quite a bit of effort to do, to turn it on anyway. Um, goes back and forth. Oh, because I had it going the wrong way. Um, this way. Now, I don't want to secure anything to it, but when I put the controller and the lid on, it will hold it in place, which I've already done. Let's see if I can do this with one hand because it's kind of heavy. So sorry for the picture quality there, but you see the controller basically holds everything in place so that now I can switch it on, I can switch it off, and it can't fall out of place because the lid holds it there. So it's just a, a quick emergency disconnect and then I'm going to try and rig up something so that I can pull it from the inside because you see I had it, I made sure it stuck out the back and the front. But uh, just a quick update on the house. Okay, you can see that um, I've put in the heat sink. I have hooked up the pop box with an appropriate cable tie. Um, well, it does that if you push it back. When, when the cable goes back in, it works fine. Um, all the connections are made. Everything's up and running pretty much, except uh, I haven't uh, installed the vacuum pump yet. And we are pretty much ready for a test drive, so uh, what do you think? Let's go ahead and do it.